Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for tuning in. So, the Kaiser Matanzas? Matanzas? One of those two we're going to take a look at today. Um, this is one of the new offerings from Kaiser. Um, it is a collaboration with custom knife maker Nick Swan. And Nick Swan is kind of a newer knife maker, only been doing it for a couple of years, but uh, a lot of talent, already built quite a following. So, we'll go through specs, overall impressions, and details. Um, here's what it ships with. Uh, there's a pouch inside. Here's the model number of this specific one. But there are two different versions of this knife. Oh, man. All right, let me show you guys real quick. Again, normal stuff, padded pouch, box, yada, yada. All right, so there are two versions of this knife. And this one is the version with the pretty heavy recurve here. Quite an interesting blade shape. There's a normal drop point version, which I assume is probably going to be the more popular of the two. But Kaiser sent this one to me to check out, and you know, at first I'm like, ugh, a recurve, but it's kind of growing on me. Um, it, I think it has some useful merits to it, but anyways, let's get into it. Um, so Matanzas, which I guess means massacre, something in Spanish, has been a point of contention as far as this knife goes. So, Nick used to live in Florida, and apparently Arizona Custom Knives is in Florida. I always assumed they were in Arizona, but apparently that's incorrect. And I guess one of the owners or the owner there recommended that he name it after Fort Matanzas, which is in Florida. A significant, uh, you know, historical and cultural piece to the area. Hence the name for this knife before he moved to Colorado. So, kind of his... Uh, I don't know, his farewell to that region of Florida that he lived in. So that's where the name comes from. And this collaboration actually started with Kaiser over two years ago, and it finally came to market um, within the last few months here. So, you know, sometimes that's how long it takes to go from, hey, let's talk about a design all the way through, you know, inception, production, prototyping, and then full, you know, full-on production hitting dealers. So anyways, interesting things to keep in mind. Um, one of the focus or foci, focuses, whatever the word is for this knife, was blade to handle ratio. That was, you know, at least on his custom knife and, you know, on this one too, um, certainly one of the things that, you know, he really wanted to incorporate. So, without further ado, let's jump into the specs. A few different size comparisons, large Sabenza, carbon fiber, my pair of two with the flitanium scales. Uh, pretty close. And then the Kershaw Dividend. So there are a few different ones, but blade length is 3.44, right around the 3.5 mark, which a lot of you are familiar with. The handle length on this particular one is 4.56 inches. So you know, just about one inch difference between the blade and handle. Overall, just about eight inches total. And it does weigh in at 3.9 ounces on my scale. So under four ounces for a 3.5 inch blade, we'll call it. Um, certainly not bad. Um, obviously, it focuses on a long, slender design, you know, similar to, I don't want to say the Quaken style, but it's been very popular the last couple of years, you know, long slender knives that carry really, really well in the pocket. So um, let's take a look at the blade stock. The blade stock is 0.14 inches. There it is next to the dividend. Obviously a fairly large difference between those two. And then let's look at it next to the para two. So pretty close. Now the thickness behind the edge on the Matanzas is uh what was it is point zero three four or is the pair of two is point zero two five so um slight difference it's it's got a little bit more thickness behind the edge but um it's not bad um you know i don't know this one is really intended as to be as much of a slicer as like the pair of two here so let's move all of those out of the way and you know again this is a titanium frame lock flipper does have a stainless steel lock insert, runs on ceramic bearings, ceramic detent. Um, fairly nice pocket clip on standoffs there. Open construction, over travel stop, you can see right there. So, and the only deployment method is the flipper. So there it is closed. 
again that long slender design so action is pretty good we'll we'll talk about that in a second here so you know overall impressions again i think it does a couple things really well carries very well it's it's lightweight um ergonomically it's very good so um certainly some good things going for it i don't love the flipper tab um, and it is susceptible to lock bar pressure on the opening um, but by and large it's it's very well executed and at $198 again it's still kind of carrying the the Kaiser value proposition right around the $200 mark and fairly close but I can't I'm not really making contact anyways so those are the uh, overall impressions you know it's Fit and finishes is quite good. A few design tweaks that I would like to see, but again, no one really cares if I want to see them or not. So let's get into it in a little more detail here. So again, this one is the, you know, a, a very heavily recurved blade. Um, to be honest, I found myself using kind of just the, the tip area here for cutting, opening boxes. Um, I did do some some chopping with it and it it rocks fairly well so I like that but obviously it is kind of a shortened cutting area um, but you know it I don't know it, it just it's comfortable for for cutting using the tip um, obviously the benefit of a recurved blade is when you're doing draw cuts um, you know naturally as you pull the blade you know you're ending up making more contact more pressure exerting more pressure on the cutting area so recurves do certainly have you know benefits or pros to them um, in normal you know everyday tasks uh, hard to say it depends on what you do but it's essentially ended up using kind of the you know the portion here where it transitions from the recurve to the you know the tip with a lot of belly here but again I found myself using just you know the forward portion of the knife for for cutting um, your I don't know your mileage may vary essentially so um, let's see anything else on the blade standard markings here model number blade steel Kaiser uh, the Matanza Matanza dang I know I'm butchering that my apologies sorry not sorry and then Nick Swan and his logo which is quite lovely and appropriate for his name so no jimping on the top. It does have a slight ramp to it. So it is actually really comfortable um, as a portion for your thumb. And they chamfered the edges so you don't have 90 degree edges anywhere on the spine, which I certainly appreciate. Now coming back to the flipper tab. Um, you know, it's, it's quite interesting. I found myself actually slipping on this one a fair bit. Um, also the fact that it is susceptible to lock bar pressure, you know, if you're not careful on these thinner knives it's fairly easy to exert lock bar pressure so you have to be quite mindful if you're not exerting lock bar pressure I, I typically don't have a problem but if I'm not paying attention that can certainly occur um, the jimping is just on the forward portion I wish they would have continued it up to the top and you know maybe even back to here that way if you're kind of half hazarding it you know you're not gonna on focus you're not gonna slip on the very top there it's you know, it's kind of weird, but I actually find this one a lot easier to flip with my middle finger just because my middle finger is coming kind of like more straight down as opposed to my first finger is kind of coming in from the side. That makes sense. So, and then when I hold with my middle finger, I exert no lock bar pressure. So, really weird observation, but I've been carrying this one enough that I've, you know, I've, <laughs> I've been thinking of different ways or different ways to flip it and then I had a pretty bad, um, rope damage here on my finger and so I couldn't use this finger for a while when I first got the knife which you know made it hard to kind of carry it and use it with that smaller flipper tab so I use my middle finger to open it the majority of the time anyways enough about me flipper tab does incorporate into the um, into the handle though which is kind of a really nice feature it, it looks really good obviously um, I just think a little more chimping wood aid now the handle, obviously we've got a carbon fiber inlay here. I assume it's a really probably thin piece of carbon fiber inlaid into the titanium. Pivot collar, certainly a nice touch. Now one thing you'll, you're going to notice here, so we have the typical Kaiser pivot. You've got the Torx, um, I think this was a probably a T8. Now on the back there is no uh, connector portion for the Torx. 
driver, whereas, you know, like my older model here, the Kaiser Guru, does have connectors on both sides. And the reason that you don't see one on the back of this knife is because it does incorporate a captured pivot. So you don't have to worry about your pivot free spinning as you screw and unscrew the knife. Um, when I got this, I also did have to take it apart and clean it. It came, it was smooth-ish, but then once I cleaned it, um, it was significantly smoother. So um, I haven't really had a Kaiser where that's been the case so far, but this was certainly one of them uh, where cleaning really did improve the action. Just made it feel more crisp and less dull, if that makes sense. But uh, let's get in here. So you guys can see the inlay. It's it's pretty clean. There were a few little, I don't know, like little kind of pieces of carbon fiber dangling that I just kind of scraped off when I first got it. Not a big deal. Um, but again, Torx hardware throughout. Lock side, um, kind of a, you know, a, I'd assume maybe kind of like a glass media bead blast. But pivot collars, which are nice. The blue, I think, is a really good accent. Love the pocket clip. I love ones that are on standoffs with a bent, um, I don't know, bent body, essentially. I, I find these work really well and they look really good. It's kind of that happy median between a, um, a bent spring clip and a mill titanium clip. You kind of get a little bit of both, so I like those. And, yeah, again, blade to handle, quite, quite good. Utilizing pretty much the entire handle there. Um, centering is good. Lockup is very good. Nice and strong, um, you know, without affecting the action at all. So, now, the edge of the blade does come fairly close to the back of the handle. My larger hands um, seem to not have a problem. Hand size may vary. That might be a little close for comfort. But while we're on the subject, ergonomically, this thing is very comfortable in the hand. I do find that long, slender knives with a very pronounced first finger choil um, just really give a sense of a lot of control over the knife. Um, and, you know, it should work out well in just about any hand size. So, um, very, very comfortable knife in the hand. All right, what else? I think, I think that's pretty much it. Let's talk about Nick for a minute. So, um, ex-law enforcement, he was a detective and a helicopter pilot. I think he did 10 years. Um, in you know in that role got into knives through um, well one as a police officer you carry a knife and then he got into bushcrafting which led him into you know custom knives and tinkering in his garage and you know he collected for I think he collected knives for like five years and then he started making knives and he's only been making knives for three years um, you know the quality of some of his customs which I've seen by pictures look quite incredible he did mentor under Richard Rogers, who's another fairly well-known custom knife maker. And you will see some similarities between uh, some of the design elements between the two, which is, of course, to be expected when you learn under a specific knife maker. So um, as far as his custom knives go, he does essentially lotteries. He builds what he wants. He puts it up for sale or takes it to a show. Um, I think some of the shows that he does are currently... Uh, Blade in the USN, and there might have been another show as well, but um, anyways, he has a Facebook group, which I'll link hopefully in the description box below if you want to go join his Facebook group, look at some of his custom work, and then maybe, you know, get lucky with one of his custom knives, but uh, currently does inlaid or inset liner locks and slip joints only. Um, he did retire the custom versions of the Matanzas, the frame locks, um, when this one went into production as a production knife. So, um, yeah, the only way to get it right now if you want it, well, there is no way to get it direct from the maker now, probably some out there on the used market. Oh, another thing here for the lock bar disengagement. This is an interesting point. Um, they put the chamfer and kind of the disengagement back here a little bit. On most knives, you know, you typically find it, I don't know, not necessarily at the back of a finger trail, typically uh, forward closer to the lock bar interface. Another knife that did this that I can recall was the Brian Nadeau Cyclone, I think it was. Um, it's an interesting way. It, it takes a little bit of getting used to just because it feels different, but it does work very well. Obviously, there's a fairly large, generous area to disengage the knife. So, 
yeah. All right, I have been all over the place with this video. I apologize, I am highly caffeinated, but hopefully you found it, I don't know, somewhat useful or interesting or just enjoyed taking a look at the knife. Um, again, there is a drop point version which you might find more appealing, uh, but it's been kind of interesting to force myself to use a, this pretty heavy recurve blade here. So you can follow me on Instagram for more daily content. Thanks so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, and as always, uh, thanks for the continued support. Take care.